Hi guys, this is Derek from Pacific Coast Auto here in Japan. And we're taking a look at a year 2000 Honda Accord SIR wagon. And so this is something that only, maybe only Japan got. Definitely US and Canada didn't get these. This one is bought at auction here in Japan. It's gonna be exported to Canada. Now what makes these special is it has the largest displacement H-series Honda engine. It's 2.3 liters, puts out 200 horsepower in a station wagon body. And so it's the closest you can get in a Honda to a Type R with a station wagon. And these wagons only came with this engine and it's bigger and more powerful than uh, all the other engines in the Accords except for the Type R. So pretty cool. Now this one has 66 413 kilometers. These vehicles are quite common at auction, pretty easy to buy them, pretty easy to find them in good condition, and prices are very reasonable. I suppose the only downside with these is that you could never get them with a five-speed manual transmission, although the automatic transmission does have switchable gears in it, and so I believe you can switch through four of the possibly five gears in the transmission. Okay, so engine runs fine, oil and coolant both look to be normal. I did open the coolant here, so I can see it's a little bit wet around there. But really nothing to say about the uh, engine, other than it does sound pretty different from a lot of Honda engines, just in terms of the size. It's a uh, long, long stroke engine compared to Honda's mostly large bore short stroke engines. And so kind of interesting, not kind of interesting, pretty awesome and sweet. Okay, so let's take a look at the auction sheet. Then we'll go around the car and we'll go inside. This car bought from auction, like I said, and is uh, bought for export. So Accord Wagon SIR, something to mention, this version of the Accord is not the same as the American version. For this generation, which I believe is uh, 1997 to 2002, this generation turned into three different Accords, the American one, the Japanese one, and the Euro one. And so uh, it is a little bit confusing, but this isn't the same as the American Accord. I think this one stayed small or stayed about the same size while the American one grew for this generation. 66, 413 kilometers, auction grade four with an interior grade B, so nice high grade there. Uh, no sales points, no notes. These are a dime a dozen kind of cars here in Japan, even though they are really awesome. It's just a different market. And so uh, it's, it's definitely on the list of those cars that fly under the radar because they are very cool, especially put some nice wheels on them. They can be pretty fast. I believe you can get them in four wheel drive, maybe. The internet said four-wheel drive. I've only ever seen the front-wheel drive ones that I've paid attention to. This is a CH9 on there, and uh, the seller didn't mention if, what uh, wheel drive that this one is, but I believe it's front-wheel drive. So power steering, power windows, alloy wheels, airbag, ABS. And here, the auction report says interior is dirty, steering wheel wear, seat is saggy. Not really that saggy, not really that worn, not really that dirty. These are pretty common marks on any of the auction sheets. Uh, the molding is scratched. Here's something weird. Okay, so the molding is this that goes around the windows. And I don't really notice any scratches, but there's some deterioration in the molding that you can really see once you come to this uh, back angle. So see the spottiness of it? And so that's on both sides as well. I'm curious to know what can be done about something like that, because it's pretty common on a lot of cars this age. Uh, in fact, my car, or my company's car, the yellow one back there, has the same problem too. Okay, wiper has rust on it. Bee, bee, bee. Nice that they commented on that because usually they don't. Aero parts are scratched, especially uh, noticeable because it's black plastic it's made out of, and then a white car, so lots of contrast there. Various scratches and dents. Front bumper has large scra or medium scratches, but it's actually really large. And then the rest of the body is pretty much perfect. It has some mild scratches and dents, but they're really uh, almost not noticeable at all. Okay, so. Much more aggressive looking than the typical of cords of this generation. That front lip spoiler and very fast back for a station wagon give it pretty unique looks, especially outside of Japan. You see these driving around a lot here in Japan. They were pretty popular, even though it has a 2.3 liter engine, which makes them a more expensive vehicle. It kind of puts them in the same class as most minivans. And so you really have to be the right kind of buyer to get this instead of a minivan. You know, somebody who likes driving a uh, nice feeling car instead of a big cube on wheels. It looks like we have a shadow line on my car. No, look at that. 
Oh, that annoys me. What is that from? It's from a tree, I think. Hmm. Okay, so these are the original wheels on it. Love the aggressive look of those headlights with that front lip. Okay, now let's take a look at the bad boo-boo parts. Oh, let's turn, let's turn those fog lights on. Let's see what those look like. Fog lights on. Oh, maybe they are on. Maybe they don't work. Don't know. Okay, so the headlights are cloudy and yellowish. Those can be polished back up. It's a fairly low front, kind of reminiscent of like the EF Civics, but of course more modern looking. It has rails molded into the roof. Really aggressive side skirt. Okay, now take a look at the side skirt. It has scratches there on it. And then the biggest scratches are here on the front bumper. And here too. And right there. Now this part here has like a polish mark. But the condition of the pearl paint is good. In fact, you might be able to see a bit of it in the video here of how it's reflecting in the sun. It does look very nice. The car's dirty, it has poop on it. Blech. At least it's a small one. And uh, sorry about that. The vehicle will get washed before it gets shipped over to Canada because they require the cars get washed in order to be imported. Otherwise, they'll send them back. Really, it's a thing. Oh, before I open the trunk, do really like the back end looks of this. I think that the uh, the lights look really nice with the completely horizontal light bar in the back there. And then the spoiler here. You know, spoilers are for downforce and racing and for good looks. So anyone who tells you it's useless to put spoilers on cars, I disagree. I think they look good on basically everything, even station wagons. And why not put two of them on? Open up. Oh, and uh, yeah, SIR. So because of the super fast back, you don't get a lot more room in here than you do in a traditional car, but it's much easier to put stuff in because there's this huge area compared to a trunk. You do have pocket areas here. There's one there and one there as well. Let's pull these tabs up. Tie down locations, four of them. And then this board here, a little bit weird design with the board. You pull the handle and it can come up, but it doesn't have anything that it attaches to to hold it up. And then this net in the back, I just put it there to be out of the way, but that net connects onto here and to these and creates a rear net here so that your groceries that don't fall out of the car. Here's the scenario. You put the groceries in the back, you put them all the way against the seats there, and you're thinking, I'm good, thumbs up, I'm so good at putting groceries in the back of my car. Then you drive home with 200 horsepower and VTEC, and then all your groceries fly to the back of the trunk. Then you open this up and they all come flying out. And that's why you need that net here. It's actually a sp official sports car piece, I think. Racing cars have nets in the back. Okay, uh, going into the back seats, I guess we'll do first before the front seats. Decent amount of room in the back, I would say. Probably a good sized vehicle for a family of four or five. Lots of leg room, lots of room for car seats, because car seats these days are giant size. Okay, I don't know if this is actual leather. I don't think it is, but it does look nice and I like the pattern. I think it's nice. Here's what the dashboard looks like. Okay, and we'll go into the front now. Now those seats do fold down, and you can get a big cargo area if you need. Power windows, of course, because every car in Japan's history ever has had power windows. Power folding mirrors. Yeah. Woo! Fog light switch, it doesn't seem to do anything. <laughs> so here's, apparently this is steering wheel wear. Now have a good look at this, because it doesn't look that worn to me. Gauges look a little bit outdated for the age of the car, but I can live with them. Okay. Seats here are uh, nice, but not really that much special. I mean, compared to the regular USDM seats, these are JDM, and that makes them tight, yo. 
and so that's good. A little box here looks useless. Actually, that's not that useless. Cool design. Yes, and a mini stop card. What? Yeah, you can get a free tea. Or maybe not. Yeah, it is. Uh, cool, but no mini stops outside of Japan, so no free tea. Okay, let's have a seat. Now, dirty inside, but easily cleaned. It's not that dirty. Here's what it looks like when you're driving, except it's more like... And so there's a screen for this, but it's underneath the seat hiding from the bad guys taking it away. Here's the climate control AC. I love the way that this is set up because if you get tired of 18, now you get 24. And it took half a second to do that. There's no button to push 13 times in order to get it down. That drives me nuts. Okay, rear defrost, defrost, all very basic stuff, easy to use. Vehicle hasn't been smoked in, cigarette lighter hasn't been used, and there's no ash remnants in here, nor bad smell inside the car. You're shifting, shift down and into here, and then over here, and then you can pick your gears with the shift lever. Now they don't have uh, buttons on the steering wheel for it, and so you do have to do the Fast and Furious automatic car style shifting. Yeah, that's a toll collection box. You put your toll card in there. EPS. I don't know what that is. EPS Plus. Somebody in the comment section will know. Decent sized. Not much to say about that. Place to put sunglasses. Place to put your wallet. Pretty simple, but simple is good. Okay, so. Time to say goodbye to this car, so I hope you enjoyed this walk around of a year 2000 Honda Accord Wagon SIR with H23 200 horsepower engine. If you have any questions, you can post them in the comments section. You can also check out our website. There's a link to that in the description. So thanks a lot, everybody, for watching, and have a great day.